instructional part of the video, check the description box below for tabs and backing tracks on my website, um, information about the sound tools I'm using today, and links to other goodies via my Patreon page. Continuing. All right, we got a capo at five. Basically, our chord progression is gonna be C. I'm gonna treat this as an E minor or an E minor seven, an F. To see. You know, if you're comparing to the Guided by Voices version, it's arguable what that second chord is, but they're lo-fi, so I'm taking poetic license. Our melody is, let's focus on that low end. And there it is. I'm not going to really count that out. So Carter style you know, which I'm calling Rawlings, but let's go back to Mama Maybell Carter. We're grabbing a C, hit that melody note, grab that zero and that one. By the way, there's slow down gears in YouTube over here on a tablet. Hi. Up here on a desktop. Is that where they are? I forget, but yeah, three quarter speed, arrows go forward and back, space bar pauses. That's a good way to work through things. So I'm, I'm thinking C, but getting that back beat, zero and one there. There's our first bar. Now I may go arpeggiate them if I'm feeling like a fancy boy. Sometimes I am a fancy boy. So I grab an E minor and I, my back beat is now up here, the, the, these two zeros. And that time I hammer it on, but it's, yeah, the principle is that the melody is on the low side with Carter style stuff um, as opposed to the high side, which is a fun backwards way to do arrangements. Um, e minor, little melody walk up, O2, seeing an F chord, but then I did like a, I don't know, you know, sometimes I just do things. There's an F chord, those two together. It's like an arpeggiation with that zero in there and then a little, I believe uh, the technical term is fiddly doos. That zero and two there, still thinking that. Uh, get that thumb note to get the tonic, the root one, and then there's our melody, O3. This was tricky to find. I love stuff like that that doesn't sound complicated, but it's actually weirdly counterintuitive to play because here's the C chord, but you're coming in with a melody note that's... And then there's that zero and one pop. And there's the C. Yeah. And I think I grabbed the low one. Hold on, let me think. Uh, yeah, I think I grabbed the, the low G there to get that one. It goes all around that again, and then I had to get the chorus. So you let it hang, and you just, that see I love this stuff. It's so simple sounding, and it's all in open position. Well, I won't waste time, but it's, well, I'll talk about it at the end, why it's so cool. So, zero and one, let me just, do my little technical check. Everything is rolling, cause yeah. It's been good lately, but man, everything's <laughs> computer stuff. Zero and one. Get that two there. And that three and three there. Still all C. And then what did I do? So yeah, that's where it's kind of the arguable what chord that is. I'm gonna call it E minor seven. So you just break that to O, O, O. One, three, kind of melodies up, t up top now. Yeah, so it goes up. And then a little unison. Five, five, five. And then back to that little F trick I did. Pop that 
you do the F trick two open zeros and then a C and then some some sixes so you hit the C three and three and I'm hybrid picking there and then open uh, G and, and uh, E there And then they come back yet. Yeah. And when you come back, you get the five and five. And it just does again. So fun. Oh wait, <laughs> wrong part. Yeah. Uh. They're tearing down a tree outside and it's distracting me. Uh, shooting in a home environment. Well, I don't think the mics will pick that up. We'll leave it at that. This one came to me. I was listening to Guided by Voices B1000 and I always liked Smothered in Hugs and then I, so I picked out my guitar and I was playing along with it and I don't know why but you know I heard that that melody, I was like, man, I could just see Gillian do this. And so when I have these little, these little ideas, I just go with them and, and see, you know, I follow them to their terminus to see what happens. And this one, it proved to be very pretty um, to the extent where like, I would love to, I could troll Gilly on Instagram and be like, Gilly, look what I did. You should do it. Not like she would care. Um, but uh, yeah, I could totally see them covering this. Well, because I mean, I've heard, I love their cover of Radiohead's Black Star, so I know that they don't just do old timey stuff and things like that. I could see them doing a mashup like this, and I think it's extra fascinating for me because you know you wouldn't hear the Gillian Welchness in this in the Guided by Voices version because it's like a lo-fi, noisy kind of mess of a song. Um, but I always like to. I don't know, I just really have a reverence for melody and, and harmony and just arrangement outside of lyric and singing. So like, I don't know, like, yeah, yeah, so certain songs, um, yeah, stuff just hits. It doesn't even matter what the lyrics are. Although, honestly, if I compare the lyrics of Gilly to Pollard, there's some, there's some overlap there. I could definitely see some overlap in the themes that they use, although Pollard is way more surreal and Gilly is equally surreal but like she has like a kind of a set group of themes that she's really good at working with that she's, yeah I mean she's so good at it uh I don't know just talking about stuff I'll leave it at that take it slow and uh thanks for following my channel and I'll see you next time